Hey crafty friends, this is Jenny from crafttestdummies.com and today I want to share with you some printing techniques and these are to be used with either a homemade gelatin printing press or a commercially made one. So the first thing um, we're going to do are just called background blends and what we're going to do is just take some acrylic paint and I like a medium body and we're just going to apply it directly to your gel plate and just for practical intents and purposes I'm going to call this a gel plate for the rest of the video and I'm using a brayer and I'm just kind of loosely mixing the paint onto the surface of the gel plate. And if it looks a little thin, I may add a little more. Now I will tell you that this is a well-used gel plate, so there are some little crusty bits around the edges. I don't clean mine off because I like it. I like that patina effect. But you're just going to go ahead and spread your paint around with your brayer. It's thicker in places, thinner in others. There's some little marks. That's all good because when you go ahead, place your paper down and give it a little massage, you're going to find that what you get is a really kind of cool, soft, um, it looks like printed paper to me, effect overall. Now again, because some of the paint was applied more thickly here, it's going to take a minute or two to dry and I get a little bit of texture. I like all that. So just kind of experiment with making your own overall background papers. So now for technique number two, we're going to make a stencil print. And I'm just kind of using what's left over on the palette there. Um, and I'm applying a stencil over the top. So now I'm adding the paper on top and I'm using my brayer to get into all of those nooks and crannies. And now I've got a lovely little stencil print. Now, kind of as a bonus, I like to use what's also, I always use what's left over on the plate all the time. And this doesn't really count as a technique, except it is kind of like a layered print, which means that I'm leaving what's on there and then I'm adding a little more on top. So what you need to remember though, is that the first paint down on the plate is going to be the first thing you see when you flip it over and you print it, if that makes sense. So it's kind of like um, first down is what's going to be in the foreground. Um, so this actually counts as a layered print. But as you can see, you get some fun textures doing that technique as well. Okay, technique number four is using it as a stamping mat. I know that's kind of cheating a little bit, but I want you to know that you can use your gel print as a stamping mat. Uh, because it's squishy, it receives the paper beautifully. So I just inked up a foamy stamp with a brayer and stamped on it and you get really lovely images. And I just kind of wanted to remind you that you can use your gel plate for, you know, kind of out of the box reasons because we are also using stamps for our technique number five, reverse stamping method. So as you saw, I went ahead and added some acrylic paint to my gel plate, and now I'm stamping on the plate, and then I'm going off the, uh, off the camera there, and I'm stamping that paint off. Or you can also just wipe it off with a paper towel. So what I'm doing is I'm actually removing the paint from the surface, and I got a little lazy here, but what that does then is it leaves a negative uh, kind of an image so that again, when you lift the print, you get a really interesting kind of negative technique. So this next technique, number six, is really the most complex of all of them, but it's really pretty easy if you just think about it in steps. So we're going to pull a positive and a negative print, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to add paint to our gel surface. As you can see, I'm mixing two colors here. You're going to lay down a stencil and then you're going to go ahead and pull a print, just removing the paint that is in between, you know, that stenciled area. And so I wanted to show you how pretty it is on black paper. Don't forget you can use black paper too. It's kind of fun. So I pulled that one and I'm going to set it aside. Now, just because I'm thrifty, I'm going to go ahead and pull a second generation print just to get more of that paint out of the empty spaces of the stencil. And I think actually that's kind of pretty too. Now, here's where kind of like the big thing comes in. What we're gonna do is add more paint onto the gel plate without removing the stencil, leave the stencil there. Because what that's doing is actually protecting the paint that's underneath the stencil. It's still there, it's still wet, it's still gonna be liftable, but we're just gonna add more paint to kind of fill up those images that we just emptied out. Those little empty cells are now gonna be filled up with new fresh paint. Then you can actually remove the entire stencil and lift a print. Now, because I'm me, I don't let anything go to waste, and I put my stencil down 
on face up where all the juicy paint is and I'm pulling a print off of the stencil as well. So as you can see, I got a print off of the, the painty stencil and then you can lift that up and see that I also get a print underneath and there you go that's the positive and the negative so that's actually like two layers of paint and they kind of nestle together it just makes a really cool like three-dimensional effect and it's a way of stretching your stencils and your gel press even further now for our last one we're gonna do a layered or an overprint and this is kind of just a fancy term of printing your paper twice. So my tip here is is that if you've gone ahead and pulled a print that you don't like, maybe it's a background or something, um, go ahead and use a dark color or maybe um, something with high contrast, even gold works. As he, you can see here I used black and then I went over and used that pretty green background to make a, a lovely print. So of course after I did that black print I couldn't just leave it be and I think that's kind of the thing about using a gel plate in printing is you kind of get excited and you want to keep going. So here are my few tips for that. If you're going to do some printing make sure you have a nice big stack of paper. You can use text weight paper for this kind of a, a project. You also can use almost any acrylic paint, even cheap acrylic paint. I like to use the Mica Color Shifts. Make sure you check the cards for my review of that paint. That's why all of this is so like luminous and sparkly. But at the end of the day, the important thing is to not be afraid and just have fun. Experiment with the plate, experiment with your stencils and stamps, different weights of paper and different inks to get really truly unique papers that only you can make. I hope you enjoy this technique as much as I do. I'm dying. Look at that. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Okay. All right, everybody. Go play. Make something awesome. And tag Craft Test Dummy uh, on Instagram. If you guys are making something and like you're using a product we talked about, you know, tag me so I can see what you're up to. Okay, everybody? All right. I gotta go. Have a crafty day. Bye-bye.